Still not quite as great looking as I would like. Let's see. I'd like these things to be vertically aligned. I'd like them to be in the middle. There are a lot of hacks to do that. It's sur a surprisingly complicated thing in CSS. Um, using something called Flexbox is the most reliable way. Um, we're going to instead use a little hack to do it. I'm going to make sure I know how tall each LI is. I'm going to explicitly set the height on student here to 4 rim. See how that looks. Must be about what it was anyway. And then let's set the line height of this span where the student name appears. I'm just going to mess with the top one. Um, give it a line height of about 40 pixels. That looks pretty close. I think 39 there, 38. I think that's about the middle. Don't forget to actually put that in our style sheet. So what, what element is that? That's every span with a class of student name. I want to do that too. I'm just going to say student name. Line height, eh, 38 pixels. Refresh the page, now they're all that way. Looks pretty good. Pretty good. Anything else? It seems quite a bit better. Now it's not perfect. If we have a really, really, really long name, or a reasonably long name on a really narrow screen. It's going to do terrible things. Some of that's easy enough to address. We can make it not wrap onto the next line. So let's give student name a white space property, the value of no wrap. That does that, keeps it from wrapping onto the next line. Does not, however, keep it from flowing way the heck off to the right. So we're going to do about that. Sorry? Max length or max, uh, max width? What if we do that? If we give that span, hmm, does that have to be, does it have to be a block level element? Let's see, max width of, I don't know. We'll just set it real low just to test this theory. I'll set it to 5 rim. Okay, it se still seems to be real long. Let's hover over it. Yeah, it's still, it's still real long. If I just say width. Refresh. It still says auto, auto, despite the fact that this is applying. I think that's because it's an inline element instead of a block level element. Spans versus divs, remember? Spans are block level, like emphasis. I don't think you can I don't think width does anything on those. What if we say display? Well, we could say display block or we could just make it a div. Either way. Let's go over here and make student name a div. With the set width, still awfully wide. Inspect. Oh no! See now my uh, nice and narrow, and all that stuff is is margin. Problem is, 
divs take up the entire well they're block level elements if i float if i make if i float this to the left and float the other thing to the right float left then that'll happen but it's still flowing way way out there so even though i can see that the width is nice and small when i hover over it it still just keeps on going So when there's so much text that something goes flowing outside the bounds, which is usually because you've done something like no wrap or set both the width and height explicitly, you can tell it what to do when it overflows. So there's an overflow rule. There's also overflow x and overflow y. It's x that we're concerned about. So we can say overflow x hidden. Refresh. Now it stops at the end of the width. Now that's, that's way too narrow. We were just proving a point, right? So how wide should it be? Depends on the width of your window, doesn't it? So in words, it should be the entire width of the LI minus as much space as it takes up for all the padding and these action things. Now, the action things don't, and the padding don't grow as the window gets bigger and smaller. They're always the same. So we could probably find some amount that represents those. We could guess. We could try to figure it out very precisely. But um, I'm okay with guessing. So let's see here. Width instead of 5 rim, we can calculate something. We can actually put a little calc function inside our CSS rule. And 100% of the LI would be 100%. So 100% is the 100% of the container, not the entire page. 100% of the width of its container minus, um, I don't know, 110 pixels. That's pretty doggone close. Actually, you know, given the padding, that's that's real close. So let's see as we make it smaller. Yeah, that's that's I like that. You dig? I like that rule. Okay, so the width going to be that calculation there. Refresh the page, make sure we did it right. Yep, it's stuck. Beautiful. If you wanted an ellipsis to show up, letting person know that there's more there, there is another um, rule called text overflow. Browser support isn't quite as as wide, but you know if it doesn't support that, then the ellipsis just doesn't show up. So text overflow ellipsis. Refresh. Check that out. Pretty nice. Pretty nice. Now that gives them no way to see the whole name. Most browsers, if you give something a title, attribute will show up as a tooltip. We could do that if we wanted. So when we're creating this list item, li data set, blah, 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 we could say li.set attribute, the title attribute, We'll set it to student.name. It's not really the purpose of the title attribute, but it's a nice side effect because most browsers do that. Refresh the page, hover over this. Oops, it did it. And then I clicked. Yeah, see that? Inspect it, and we can see uh, it actually doesn't show it to us here, but in the little preview, but 
dollar sign zero dot at get attribute title. Um, that's because I have the wrong thing selected over here. I have the div. Uh, oh no, that's the right thing. Well, it must be there. Why am I not seeing it? Why am I not seeing that title? Oh, because I put it on the LI, not the, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. LI, class, student, clear fix, title. Yep. That'll be fine. So a line, student name, and handle overflow. <coughs> 